Otohina. Yeah. Hello, my name is Paul Otohina. Um, I'm a writer, what mm -hmm. you might want to call an author. I do novels, I do um, gospel books. I'm also a preacher, a coach, you know, and then a couple of other things. Well, it seems like your your list of accomplishments here are, are very vast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's let's dive into why you're here today. Good morning, Lagos. Let's talk about that one first. Yeah, it's actually good morning, Lagos. I'm sorry. See, <laughs> see, <laughs> let me tell you, I've had a long week. I apologize, okay? I yeah. do apologize. Yeah. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. I think the idea for the book uh, came uh, came up some time ago. I actually wrote this book in um, 2018. Okay. You know, but we didn't get to publish it until about um, two years afterwards, 2020 or 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically about um, some of the strange happenings in Nigeria. You know, suddenly we had a situation where it seems all of the people in Nigeria, they are torn, you know, and then they were all divided along ethnic our lines along political lines you know so um, and then the fallout from all of that uh, some of the issues we have here suddenly nigeria and the de nigerians were no longer safe you know um a group of persons or people came up and then they thought the best thing they could do in nigeria is to kidnap people kill people for religious reasons for ethnic reasons for political reasons you know so I think that's the general idea behind the book, but indeed, the concept is situated, you know, and then it's predicated on love. You know, there was a young man who, for the first time, was going to Lagos. Lagos is what you might call New York in America, you know. Okay. Yeah, over 21, 22 million persons, you know, people live in Lagos State. So it's just like your New York here. So um, there is this young guy, Ejiro, who was going to the big city for the first time, was going to Lagos for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then he ran into all of these persons, the kidnappers, you know, those who thought they can actually catch people or kidnap people for religious reasons, and then they butcher them, they kill them, and all of that. So they ran into that situation. Along the line, he fell in love with one of, you know, the persons that was actually kidnapped the same way he was kidnapped, you know. And then eventually they got saved, they got married afterwards, what you might call a very happy ending, you know, afterward. But that again is just um, kind of like a surface of the whole thing. The male idea basically is to capture how Nigeria has descended from a very stable country in terms of politics, in terms of religion, in terms of ethnicity, into a chaos, you know, a chaos that one might even tend to want to believe that uh, has a subtle, you know, um, support of the government, you know as it were, because prior to this time, we all live in unity. We all live like brothers and uh, sisters. So once w with this government, things turned around and everything fell apart. So basically, the book itself is to capture all of these things that happened, you know, within this, uh, um, the non very soon this government will be leaving. But for the last eight years, these are some of the issues that have happened. You know, it's not necessarily a political book. It's a novel. It's a, something that everybody when you pick it up, you have a sense of what is going on in Africa, what right. is going on in Nigeria, and then the language of love, and then the language of people, you know, and everything that you need to know. Basically, that's um, Good Morning Lagos. The name Lagos uh, is very, um, kind of like, apparently very um, eye-catching because the whole essence, the whole thing happened between where he was living and how, you know, how where he was living and then the journey to Lagos. Between that stretch, within that stretch, you know, all of these things happened. Uh, you know, you really can't talk about Nigeria without talking about Lagos. Indeed, Lagos is the um, economic center of Africa. Mm -hmm. It is also the entertainment center of Africa. You know, the Davidos, the whiskey, and all of them, don't avoid they are all from Lagos State. Mm. You know, so that's uh, like a New York of Africa. So, if you don't mind, because I'm interested, can yeah. you read us a passage? Oh yeah, sure, book? I can. Take me, take me deep into yeah. Africa. I wanna, I wanna. Let me see. I think uh, the introduction would be something I would want to read very quickly. All right, please do. Yeah, let me read. You know, okay. Yeah, here is this, the introduction. There is death in the land. Men, women, and children are disappearing in great numbers. Willing has become a song for the orphan child whose father and mother were slaughtered to make way for a new order. Young women have become widows, and young men have been made 
to live without their wives. Maidens have been forced into the forest to mingle with sinister beings. The old men sit with both hands plastered to their cheeks, bemoaning the loss of their, their hairs, those who should pour handfuls of sand on their grave when they die. The land is filthy, sticking from the rottenness of dead bodies sprawling across the nation. From north to south and from east to west, there is a gory massacre. Every day, lives are lost, killed by bandits. They cut their victims open with machete in cold blood. They have other sophisticated weapons to repel any naive resistance. Somewhere in Gombe, a state in northern Nigeria, a church is attacked by Fulani Hesmen. Nine people are killed. The victims include two children, three women, two youth, and two elders. In Benue State, a middle bed region in Nigeria, an entire community is touched by the hensmen after killing and slaughtering the inhabitants, with pregnant women being disabled and their children sliced into unrecognizable meatballs. In Edo State, southern Nigeria, the hensmen are killing and pillaging the land. Farmers are scared to go to their farms. The green papers have become red and rotten. And now, with no one to harvest them, they have fallen to the earth. In Ubogui, a town in the state, there is always a siege on the people and on travelers to and from Lagos State, as the town is situated just by the Lagos Benin Road. In Delta State, in southern Nigeria too, women are accosted in their farms. They are raped and killed. The plot is to cause fear and starvation first before taking over the land. The eastern part of Nigeria, the land of the Igbos, seems to be a safe heaven for now. Their youths are hot-headed. They are fought with broken bones and spilled blood, the vicious march of colonization. But the Ainas are ravaging the nation everywhere their feet touch. There is a tale of blood, pain, and death. They have ravaged the land and sacked it, displacing its inhabitants. Sleep has vanished. Peace has run to yonder place. The rats in the house has gone to call the ones outside to come and razak its master's estates. They crawl on their bellies and hide in the dark. They feed on blood like men of such evil taste. The land that was once green has now become red, red from the blood of the innocent. It is a quest for power and supremacy. It is also a quest for religious domination. The North, the Fulani North, not the House and North, is vexed by the audacity of the Middle Belt to think of itself as a Christian region and to align itself politically with the Christian South. The robust Shinanigans of the Southeast, the Igbos, scared the Fulani Lord too. He is also settling prone off by the wits cunningness and craftiness with which the Southwest, the Yoruba nation, manages to set a clear path for the continuation of the Odudua dynasty. And then the wealth of the South South makes the Fulanin Lord's eyes bulge, and now he is greedy. He wants to lay hold on their resources. The hyenas are taking over. The country is dying. The end is near. The ship has begun to sink. Who will save Nigeria? Many still think it is entirely politics. A few individuals wanted to superintend over more than 200 million others in the nation, but there is more to it. The army chiefs, mainly of Fulani extractions, are making big bonuses in the battlefront, aided by their augas, their superiors in government. They watch and provide, and provide cover for the bandits, while the ordinary soldiers, mostly from the other parts of the country outside the core north, are offered as sheep before the wolves. The Fulani government is for the Fulani elite, not for all people. It is for the Fulani elite Muslims, not for all Muslims. They want all the land and the resources therein. They also want everyone to worship God in the Islamic faith. Until these are achieved, the blood of the baboos and the gorillas and the monkeys must be shared. In all this, Ejiro and Chimamanda found love in the most unusual circumstances because love is independent of fear and war and hate and pain. This is not a treacherous against the Fulani nation, otherwise some would hurriedly pervert it to sound the drumbeat of war. But this is the unveiling of the atrocious intents of national leaders who happen at this time to be Fulanis. When a child does well, he receives commendations from his parents. The elders of the land have not done well. The entire political class of Nigeria, whether Igbo or Yoruba or Hausa or any other people, has not done well. I am just a town crier. Do not come after me. Do not come after my family. Do not come after my people. A storyteller is not responsible for the plot in the stories he tells. He is only responsible for the narratives, narratives he, he, he employs. And these narratives were shot in not to present the Nigerian politicians as the curse of the earth, the forbidding of nature, and the mystic of creation. Do not kick against the rock. You know, I saw so many things and I thought I needed to understand why those things were happening. And then even though, as it were, at that time I had already been a Christian, I still was, uh, you know, living as though I wasn't a Christian. So I needed to ask certain things. 
So in my quest to know the Lord for myself, in my quest to have a revelation of who Jesus is, mm -hmm. in my quest to have a working relationship, you know, that I can attest to, you know, that was how I got into knowing the Lord for myself. For instance, the Bible says you can heal the sick. How do I heal the sick if I've never healed the sick? How am I supposed to heal the sick if I don't practice how to heal the sick? Mm -hmm. You know, it is a work of faith. How do I, for sure, I believe what Jesus says I can do, I can do it. But why haven't I been seeing the result? That's perhaps because I have not learned how to do it. I haven't learned how to do it. Why am I not doing it? Mm -hmm. So the process, what the process, how it will take for you to appropriate every promise that the Lord has given to us in the Bible and then make it into a feasible, tangible, working reality prompting the writing of that book. So in a short, in a nutshell, it, it, working in divine power is just kind of like a concise manual, you know, okay. for you to, you know, to walk through. If you want to walk in power, if you want to, the things you need to do to enjoy so the power of God. And so it's almost power. like guidelines. Yes, it? basically. That's so can you give us, and I'll say like two guidelines off the top of your head that you think yes. are like important for the listeners? Yeah, yes. One, one, you have to know the word, the word of God. You have to know the word. And there are three, uh, three dimensions to the word. One, you must know the word. Two, you must accept the word. Three, you must implement the word. For instance, I say, for instance, the Bible says you shall not be sick. That's, you have to read the Bible to know that the, the, word, the Lord says you shall not be sick. Now, having read that, the next stage will be accepting the word. One thing is to know what the word says. Another thing is to accept it. So when you know the word and then you accept it, there is, there is the last stage. You mm. have to implement or apply that word that you have received into any situation. Mm -hmm. right? It is the application that we fail mostly as people, you know, because we fear. Just like Peter Peter saw the Lord walking on water and I said, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come to you. And then the Lord said, come. And then Peter walked on the water. And then when he, start, when he saw the waves, he shrunk. He started to doubt. He started mm -hmm. to sink. You know, so that's the, the application of the word is where we are missing it. You know, okay. so basically. All right. So for your last question, yes, your sir. last question. Yes, sir. Because I see both of these are very Lord divining mm -hmm. books. Where do you see yourself in five years? And what is your next project looking like? Yeah, um, let me answer the last, the last, <laughs> for, the, for the first. Uh, as for Good Money Lagos, I already have, um, I'm actually editing the sequel to it already. Ah, yeah, I'm okay, actually, okay. You know, I, actually editing the sequel to it. So at some point, maybe in May or, or June, you know, I should be going for publication. As for another gospel book, I have another one you know that i'm currently just editing too so i might probably be doing two books this year also okay you know so those are that and then for where i want to be or where i see myself in the next five years five years long I time I, I i think um not necessarily just being famous okay yeah but i think i will have more platforms to share the word of god i will have more platform more platform to um talk to young people and people in general. I will okay. have more platform to uh, to give as much as God has given to me back to society. But to answer it in another way, in the next five years, I think you'll be proud that, oh yes, I actually interviewed him at some point, you know, because I'll be I'll be everywhere. Hey, yeah. just say hey. <laughs> yeah. When you're on TV, go, hey, we're at the table. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be everywhere, you know, doing God's work. Not fame for fame's sake, fame for, I want to be, I, for me, fame is is not um, an aid in itself. Okay. You know, it is kind of like um, when I become famous, it is for the sole reason of influencing other people, younger generation, you know, for the Lord, for his kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, basically. Not necessarily me being famous for being famous. Yet, nah. So you want to be rich, but not for, say, in a materialistic way, nah, more in a spiritual not, way. Not actually rich. I'm going to be extremely wealthy. Okay. Being rich there and being wealthy are two separate things. Touche. Yeah. So wealth Touché. includes wealth, wealth includes, you know, divine health. It includes, you know, long life and every other thing, you know. So basically. So wealth for me is not something that um I'm parti particularly gonna be say, Oh, because I'm wealthy, I'm just no no. It's something that I can give back to society. I like that. You know, basically. I will have to give. That's like in that. essence to God's work and then to my fellow neighbors and to anywhere and anyone that will be needing my help. 
I definitely like that. Yeah. Where can they find your book at? Every yeah, we can get it anywhere from Walmart to Barnes and Nobles to Amazon to everywhere. Any book outlet, you there can get go. a book everywhere. All right, and last thing, do you want to give a shout out to anybody? Uh, I think <laughs> I, I <laughs> this is always the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's more like, like the old city where you say shout out to some person, say that you don't see some other person like hey, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think you like you me. You can't can't miss anybody. Let's yeah, go. but but uh, what I want to say is uh, first of all. My greatest shout out, shout out to the Lord Almighty, my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we thank you. And um, to um, my secretary, Deborah Ijofo, you okay. know, she's been very wonderful. Uh, to my um, my friends, I love all of you. Amazing Grace Church. You know, I love all, every one of you. Uh, Film Football Foundation and basically every one of my friends, you know, just, I don't want to mention names. <laughs> you know, we'll be on the same side, you know. Hey, just be safe with it. Well, yeah. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, nice to meet you. And Symbia. we will catch you about, we don't know when we'll catch you again, but we'll be keeping our eye on Of course. This is Free World Radio, and we'll be right back.
Let's get it to the money. All right. On UT. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Free World Radio. We're back live and full effect. Y'all good? Okay. Um, introducing our next person who never stops working apparently, <laughs> who just finished Studio 18's roof, by the way. Yeah. CEO of M O M I Collective LLC, founder of Grind Time, now songwriter of over 500 <laughs> songs. Give it up. For Mr. Matt Eels, everybody. Appreciate Matt it, Eels, man. Matt Thank Eels. you guys for having me. No, it is. I just got to remember not to look to my left or all. Yeah. <laughs> I looked over there and I was like, ah, I'm up, I'm up, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, so let's get to the basics first. Yeah. Who are you? Where are you from? And just tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, man, my name is Matt Eels. I'm the founder of Grind Time Now, which was the very first battle rap league that hit the youtube platform in 2008 we had over 125 million organic views on that platform mm. um at our peak we were we had a chapter in every major city in the united states in sydney australia and in um uh where's the other one we uh in south africa mm. so we are part of the United Nations uh, Music is a Natural Resource Program. Okay. Um, for and it was just because we were popular on the internet, and that was between 2008. I sold Grind Time in 2017. I've lived here in Orlando all of my life, so it was just entertainment wise. I was in the Marine Corps, got out in 2008, went viral with Grind Time. Big holes. Yeah, man. Uh, I uh, ran that for 10 years, sold it, and then started kind of doing. You know, by then all the social media, you know, networking and stuff was active. So mm -hmm. I bounced around social media management for a couple of people. Then I started my company. It was the the Mommy Collective, which okay. we can get into that. But that's Absolutely. that's a community building program. It stands for the Mind of Mad Ills. I curate art shows to raise awareness for community building activities. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And and just to add in there, because I know a lot of y'all are looking, he does a lot of community service work if you're interested. Yeah, man, yeah. When I say a lot, like, if you ever, if you follow this man, a, at least once a week, he's with the, like, it's, it's not. You got to, man. You got, you, if you're watching this, man, and you're the one that posts on Facebook and <laughs> IG and all that, y'all post about the social issues, but, like. You're not out in your neighborhoods and you're not actually doing it. Absolutely. Like, why are you doing it? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like my focus is the community. I've lived here in Orlando my whole life. I love it. Let's there, talk about there, there's an abundance of resources here that talk that nobody supports anybody or any of those kinds of talks that people get caught in. Those are the same kind of talks that, that were happening when I was a teenager. It's a mindset like. I love this place. There's a oh, whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of creatives here. There's a whole, whole bunch of opportunity. <laughs> like I can't even like. I'm so happy at, at at what everything is turning into for people that are living in Orlando, and it's very much so a transient city. But there's so much. There's so many creatives here. Even like look at all the older industry professionals. They retire, and where do they move to? move here you know like there's a lot of stuff going. Full this is an entertainment driven city we're one of the top on creators and that that they determine that by how many um how many like art supplies arts and craft stores mm -hmm. were in a certain like mile radius from the city number one is san francisco number two is orlando Interesting. Over right. any other city in the United States. Right. It is a very creative. Look, we got Disney out here. We have all these programs out here. And as much as people like harp on that, like local creatives, like if you look at it from a different way and you learn how to tap into that and the tourism, that's what the free daps did. And we can talk about that. But like, hey, hey you like you. You can definitely make a, a, a nice living out here in Orlando by just serving your community and like really getting back to the basics of hip hop culture. Like you can do it right here in Orlando. See, this is why, this is why the people needed this interview. If you're on my live right now, I appreciate you. <laughs> if you're just listening, I know y'all need to, if you're on YouTube watching this, Hey, just put the popcorn down. Come, come, come closer. <laughs> Make sure you listen. Cause we about to drop a lot of gems in this interview right now. Yeah. So let's start from the basics. Mommy, talk about it. 
So Mommy Collective stands for the Mind of Mad Ills. All right. So originally I thought if you were to walk into my world of an art installation, like what would you see? All right. If I if I threw an event, I would want it to be everything that goes on in my mind, which is bringing in all the aspects and elements of hip hop together under one roof. Okay. When I set out to do the battle rap, it's very niche. And even though I was successful in doing it, it was only a platform that I could build for just battle rappers and nobody else. All right. With the Mommy Collective, I'm able to curate full on art shows. It's not a rap show. Mm -hmm. When I go to these galleries and venues and say I'm curating an art show, there's a little bit more value and prestige behind pitching that versus like, hey, I want to throw an open mic. So I invite out artists to paint from the artist community. And these are some of like the top artists like Lemus who painted the um, the logo for Orlando City Soccer, the, the lion that you see on the yeah. side of the uh, the city buses and stuff. Absolutely. Like he's coming out to paint. He's doing it at our Ghost Face show. Like I have people like him that are involved so I can curate them out. Wait for the Ghost Face. Yeah, you, that's going to be, we'll talk about that too. That's, that's a so special day. I, I have all of these artists, homies, who are like our fans of mine from doing the battle rap stuff and the music. Now I can put them all together and we can throw art shows. We have B-boys and B-girls break dancing. We have MCs on the mic. We have DJs. We have, and you know, a lot of these parties in these cities are just a rap show or just a, a production show or just a this. We, this was meant to is be all encompassing. Yep. Everybody's allowed to be in this and we put it together for value, but it's to raise awareness for community building projects. So what Mommy Collective is set out to do is curate this art and these art events and shows to sell these pieces and programs that we have for community building projects. So what is that, right? Mm -hmm. So the nonprofit that we have set up, we have two big asks. One of them is to raise $24 million to be able to give 1,000 local artists $2,000 a month for the period of a year. Number two is we're looking to buy space where we can build tiny home living communities and erect our gallery so that we have the ability to help out local struggling artists so they can help out the economy in turn by their output. And there's studies that show that that are for that, that artists locally who are able to be creative and output, it generates a lot for the local economy and their creative spaces. And we are very much driven by that here in Orlando. So it's very important that I started here, but we have cities lined up ready to go. We have New York. That's why I do the things in New York, North Carolina. We're down in Miami, out in Los Angeles, in Houston, Texas. Like there are people that are ready to activate on this. And this is very new. The Mommy Collective is something I've developed within the last two years. Okay. It came through from starting to mess around with NFTs and the art space. So my partner is very into the crypto world and it comes paired with education, okay. but we've created our own, our own community base. It's, it's kind of like a Facebook. It is its own social media platform, but on our social media platform, it's not ran by AI. So you're not fed. We don't build profiles off of people to get on our social media platform is the application to sign up for receiving the two thousand dollars a month so we can show our investors and our people that donate yes this is our personal community a thousand artists per each city so that's how you get in on being curated into the gallery but on this platform it also pairs up with online courses that you can take and learning from people that are in the industry if there's professional painters that we're curating we have them doing courses songwriters videographers, anybody that is talented or a business professional in the industry, you can learn from them through video courses on our platform. So it's it's kind of like an all-in-one community building platform that gets you off of these these social media platforms oh that are like they're farming you. This is what they're doing. And like we're allowing you to sell your artwork and your space through us, but also you'll be signed up to our our program. So when we receive grants we're able to distribute those to the local artists. That's what mommy is set up to do. So yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. That's again the man that wears 
it's a, it, it's a lot and it takes yeah, a lot, you yeah, know, so that's why I do a lot of those different things like the roofing consulting. Was just about to that's say, that's community based built. So like it it pairs with education. A, a lot of people my age, I'm 39. A lot of my homies are business owners. A lot of my homies are homeowners. And they don't know, like nobody tells you when you go and buy a home that there's all these different laws set up to how you have to run your home. If there's an HOA in your community, how they dictate mm -hmm. what you do with your home. Like people are very unaware of what's happening and what's the most expensive home improvement project that you have in your home. It's a roof. Absolutely. Okay. And so... In the state of Florida, there's a game when it comes to roofs. Like, there's bad roofers, there's bad insurance companies, and there's bad homeowners. And between all three of them, they're so bad that laws have been put in place to – to it, it makes it stricter for you to be able to put a claim in whenever a hurricane comes through. So, like, just on the light side of that, it usually in about 20 years, when you buy your home 20 years later – the insurance company will tell you, hey, you got to replace your roof. It's getting too old. The older your roof gets, the higher the liability on it, right? Absolutely. So now it's to the point where your shingles in the state of Florida will last about 15 to 18 years before you really need a replacement. Because of all the damages from the hurricanes that were caused to both coasts this past year, there are insurance companies that are kicking people off and their roofs are only 10 years old. So... If anybody's young and they're just getting into buying properties in the state of Florida, by the time by the time you actually purchase your property, like insurance companies are so strict on it, like they're they're making you pay extra. They're they're raising uh, rates. They're making people believe that they don't have the right to put in a claim, and you don't know this, so you need somebody like a roofing consultant who's able to show you, like, look, man. This is what we do. We go out, and, and I'm not against insurance companies because I find, I find bad homeowners that they, they damage their roofs on purpose. So my job is to go out. I inspect your roof. I teach you about your roof and let you make a decision on whether or not you're going to you, – all right, I need to make a concentrated effort on getting a new roof. How do I do this without getting ripped off? And that, that's one of the areas where I would find that my friends later on in life were getting ripped off the most. So while I was doing this community building project, I'm going to be buying up land and we're going to be building our own places. I need to know this area. So that's where this roofing consultant comes in. I know pipelines. I know, you know, ordering of supplies for buildings. So I would know like not to get ripped off by a builder. And Absolutely. now that I have all of these these connections with these contractors of different sorts, not just with roofing, I'm able to ball them into my community building project. So one hand washes the other and yeah. you know i say this to like if you're a man or woman of many hats this is a time frame in how our economy is to where like you should you should flourish because now you hold the keys to putting a lot together Absolutely, and making yeah. something so yeah that's where that's where that comes from i very much so like it and it's about helping people out and educating them and it pays off like i don't sell roofs I consult with homeowners and teach them what the laws are. I'm not a lawyer either. Yeah. Like you can consult a lawyer, but like I show you what it is from experience. I have I've ex I've had uh, over 500 projects that I've managed. I've sold over a million in Great roofs in, in a year. Like and I stepped into roofing only two and a half years ago. There we go. And it was because of sales experience and negotiating through my companies through Grind Time. I never went to college. I don't have a degree in anything. I went to the Marines out of high school yeah. because I was failing high school. Mm. And the Marines mm. talked to my administrators and got my grades changed up a little bit. So wow. I was able to graduate. So, like, all of this stuff was industry experience was because I threw myself into it and actually did it. I didn't learn none of this from a book. I mean – I would rather read a book more so than, than go to college. But, like, you know, all of this was industry experience. So now that I am 39 and have lived this life of, you know, the birth of social media, going viral through it, going viral through it in a grassroots, organic way and understanding how that developed into ad buying and all the stuff that you have now, like, I'm very aware of the landscape. So 
when other people come to me now and ask me, how do I do this? How do I do that? I just found a way to rope it all into one big community building effort. So everything that I do, the rapping, the freestyling, the book writing, the speaking, the curating of events, I managed to ball all that up into one company. And that way I'm not, you know, running myself thin. So, Absolutely. yes, I am very busy. Yes, I am very tired. But it's all for like it's all pushing behind one thing. you know. And it took me took me years to learn how to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, that's. That's kudos, where I'm at now kudos, with it. Kudos, 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 <laughs> because, yeah, I'm learning. I'm still learning, so I definitely understand that. We, yeah, man. We have a lot of talks where we're like, hey, I'll call you back. All right. A day later. Hey, man. Hi. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah, it's cool. man. That's cool. All right. So now let's talk about, well, you kind of touched on grind time here and there. So what I would like to know is, what is your favorite moment? From your grind time experience. Hmm, like that's that's a good one. Yeah, like not your most inspirational, like what is your like hey, I will always remember this moment when we did this. Um, my favorite moment are the personal conversations that I've had hmm. with like the celebrities. Okay. Just to see what they're like. Like I'll never forget the first time I talked to Meta World Peace. <laughs> Right, because he, he had put up a video on his YouTube and he titled it um, one of our battles that was going viral at the moment that was on World Star. Mm -hmm. And we had our management reach out and say, hey, man, you can't title your YouTube Grind Time Now Battle This Guy versus This Guy. Like, it's a whole entire other company. Mm -hmm. And we found out that he was like a fan of Grind Time. That's when we started realizing, like, oh, yeah, like celebrities are starting to watch you know what i'm saying so like <laughs> we would get into these personal like conversations to find out that like man they're just everyday people they're really cool ass people and when you're the one that's providing them the entertainment they talk to you in a whole different light so those are my favorite moments when like those people come around and then they're like hey oh you're the guy that that i was watching this whole time like you're one of one of the one of the moments that i'll never forget is when Complex uh, Magazine did a interview with Young Guru, who's uh, Jay Z's engineer, okay. and it was the the title of it is the top ten things that you don't know about Jay Z, and one of them was that he's watched every single Grind Time battle. He watched Yo. got Grind Time URL, so <clears throat> he was a fan, and like those are the moments where like you're like yeah all right man, I really did do something, and you can you can pull those back, but it, it's. It's those moments, and then there's like little crazy stuff that happens when you're like on tour with some of these, with some of these people. They got they got those. They really do have those types of lives. <laughs> like it, it does get crazy seeing all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, I can't really pinpoint a particular moment because like it's been a magical ride, man. It's I been, can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can literally imagine. Yeah. All right, so. Hmm. So many things to choose from. So yeah, bro, choose. let's go. <laughs> I believe it was DAP. Was free DAPs. Free DAPs. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so free DAPs. Free DAPs is a, a crew of nine people. It's a mixture of MCs who can freestyle and improv comedians. Ah. So between us nine, we come came up with a three person show. Uh, it's an hour long where we do like five minute improv skits, but we build songs out of interviews that we have with the audience. Mm. Free Daps is the only improv rap crew that's ever existed that's held contracts simultaneously at all of the major theme parks, which mm. is Universal Studios, SeaWorld, um, Walt Disney World, um, even a uh, fun spot like That's we've had our cool. shows there and 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 we're booked out like for universal will be we had a show called straight out of food truck where we pretended like we were food truck workers and and there was a food truck there and there was a speaker hey everybody come in for free samples and you get like 800 people you know they come running in and then you have a, a bunch of smoke coming from the truck and they open it up and like we're in there, we're like, oh man, like we got we got some bad news and some good news. The bad news is we burned all of our food, but the good news is we have these freestyles to serve all of you guys. So like we would do every 
every theme park we do something like SeaWorld, we would do their um, the Christmas program where we would act like we were answering a, a, a Craigslist ad for freestyling because we thought it was um, g- it was called gift wrappers. Like we thought it meant like the gift of gab, like shoot the gift. So we show up <laughs> and SeaWorld told us that no, we meant like gift wrappers in the back. And we're like, no, nah, we can't do that, but can you let us wrap? And they said, yeah. So that's the story that we tell people when we do our show. And then we end up doing this whole freestyle show. So we were able to like theme it out. Well. Free Daps um, is signed to Deggy, which is the second largest agency for touring um, colleges and uh, military bases. Okay. Free Daps, the, there's two there's two areas where there's like college tour. There's NACA and there's APCA. NACA, uh, I'm sorry, um, NACA deals with the larger schools, okay. and APCA deals with the smaller schools, communities, um, colleges, and things like that as well. Okay. So in the APCA touring, we're one of the number one performing acts in that circuit. So Free Daps goes everywhere. We recently just started doing military bases. So last year, I went to Alaska. Uh, these guys went over to Qatar. They're they're doing it everywhere. So um, we just went to Alaska, guys. Like nothing. It's it's great. It's awesome. But the members, the founding members. Um, one of them is uh, Jordan, which is It's Keys. He's mm-hmm. viral on TikTok. He made the song Me Want Bite. Mm-hmm. So he's he's one of the founding members. Isaac Knox, he's one of the other members. He's a comedian as well. Heath McNeese, he used to be signed to Sony. He's like a, he was a touring like singer songwriter type of uh, artist. Okay. Uh, there's myself, SB, the anomaly is in it. SB is like a freestyle artist. He's in a rap group with KRS one son and tours with him as his opening act. That's he lives awesome. here in Orlando as well. SB, the anomaly, awesome. uh, Mark Harriet, Francisco. There's a whole bunch of people that are, there's nine of us guys. We're like, we're like the improv Wu Tang, you know? And then we just go everywhere and we make, we make up shows based on freestyles. And what's dope about it is, we don't got to practice. I don't have to practice a set. You know what I'm no, saying? Like, just we just show up and have fun with each other. Well, so um, since you said Wu-Tang. <sighs> yeah. Let me look off in the distance real quick. Because <laughs> on June 24th, which, by the way, for yeah. all the listeners out there. This pub- is, listen in right here. Public service announcement, because there's two important things I'm about to say. Number one, June 24th is a national holiday. <laughs> As I was born. Yeah, man. So, regardless of anything, it's DJ Red Table's birthday, June 24th. <laughs> We're about to do something crazy for it. So, Mad Ills and his infinite power <laughs> has invited me to come to his event on that day. And I, I have accepted warmly because Ghostface Killer yeah. will be in the building in Orlando Matter of fact, why am I announcing it, sir? <laughs> sir, t- in the words of my in the words of my Thursday show, talk yo shit. What's so, going on, June twenty fourth? This is this is historic. Please. Uh, there is a resort called Dosa Vida. It's Dosa Dosa Vida FL dot com. If you want to go to the website, all right. The owners of Dosa Vida are opening up a brand new resort with the intentions of theming out full-on musical experiences. Hmm. So you picture something like a cruise ship takeover, but this is right in the middle of Orlando, right off of the John Young exit. It wraps around Dulce Vida. And June 24th is going to be one of our first themed-out shows, so I decided to do Ghostface Killer. So this is what happens, right? When you go there, it's a private resort only open to people who have tickets for the Ghostface show. Absolutely. Every single room that you get comes with a meet and greet with Ghostface Killer. Hmm. Um, there's the main room that fits 1,500 people. It's five floors. The side room is we're calling it the Drunken Master's Den Uh-oh. for that night. That Uh-oh. fits 500 people. Uh-oh. Midas the Beast is headlining. He's a, a local artist who... It has been praised by many people. He was on Alchemist's last album, mm. and all the all the praises for that album were because of Midas the Beast killed it. 
he's very much so involved around like Wu Tang side members and stuff like that. So he's perfect for the bill. Okay, okay. Paper is on that. I we got him on the main paper. stage. We need paper. Yeah. So as far as programming goes, at eight o'clock the doors open. It'll Absolutely. be like a regular concert. Um, then at night it turns more into a party mode back in the pool area. You could fit about 2000 people back there. We curated, uh, uh, 10 artists for mommy gallery to paint those, those pieces will be for sale. Oh my uh, portions of those will go to a community building project, Absolutely. right? We have B boys and B girls that every 30 minutes on the hour will be break dancing and having ciphers in the building. I have a media tour going on. We have some of the top media covering it. Uh, is it? Hold on. Yep. Yep. Is it? Yes. Is indie it, is jams. It jams covering so it? in the where indie is a great segue into where indie jams works into. Oh. Right. So I have to create programming for the guests because the guests who buy rooms they are able to check in at 3 p.m. Hmm. So they're before the place opens up, right? So from 5 to 6 p.m., they're going to do the Indie Jam Cypher. Talk about with, it. With uh, Check the Rhyme Radio is going to be hosting um, the Cypher along with Indie Jams. They're, they're going to be the guest host. Okay, okay. And okay. we're going to have a Cypher. So if any MCs want to be a part of the Cypher, Okay, okay, okay. All you have to do is get an advance ticket. The early bird tickets right now are $30. That's it. All you got to do is get a ticket. It's in his bio. Yeah. You contact myself or Indie Jams Radio. Show proof that you got the ticket. We'll let you in at 4 o'clock so you can prepare for that. And you can also see all the other things that are going on that have been programmed specifically for the hotel guests that are there. So it's going to be a crazy night. But that night is only being used to promote for our big event, which is our hip-hop takeover in August. Day it is going four. to be a three-day event. I can't release the names of the artists. They're all national artists, and they're, oh, and they're big God. artists, so it's going to be crazy. So with this resort, with Dolce Vita, Florida, we are curating out multiple genre experiences. There we go. So not just hip hop, we're doing EDM, we're doing country, we're doing rock, basically anything entertainment driven where you want to create an intimate experience. This is the place. This is high end. You walk into this place and you think Miami nightclub, brand new, like Vegas, like nightclub. Bring it's Vegas got five Florida. floors on it. Uh, when it's all said and done and it's all built out on one side, they're going to have a steakhouse. On the other side, they'll have like a hibachi grill. They ha like it's insane. They got a big LED wall. If you're exiting off of John Young and you look over to the right, it wraps around that building. Mm -hmm. They have a big LED screen out there, too, where you can see what's going on. But this is going to be the place where you can have all of your experiences. It's 21 and up. It's themed out, and when all said and done, you're also going to be able to purchase condos, condo space at that resort. Uh, so if you want to live there, that's a whole nother conversation. That's with Dolce Vita, but it's it's a new resort experience opening up, and we start January 24th on your man's birthday. What a day. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of tequila and Bel Air on that day. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. All it's right. going to be crazy, bro. That's I hope y'all are listening. I hope y'all got the dimes. I'll be promoting it as well. So if you need a ticket, check me out. Yeah. Um, let's get to the meat, bread, and butter of this <laughs> interview. Let me stretch. Uh, I didn't bring you on here just for <laughs> playtime. I'm gonna run this beat real quick for you. I. Right. We're gonna. We're not gonna test because we're not gonna disrespect your freestyle. Nah, <laughs> that, 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 we're not. Now you can say the test. You can say yo. We're gonna, that's what it's about. What freestyling is about, right? In a sense, but we're not gonna say that because that's highly disrespectful. What All we're right. gonna do is we're gonna play this beat and we're gonna see how bad you fillet this beat. Or we're right. just gonna see. Just, just make sure the beat. Just leave some in the beat for me, okay? Okay. Just leave some in the beat for me. Right. Behold the man at work. <laughs> the Please man at work. Let that man cook. Right. Let him cook. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, can you turn it up? Can, you, can I can you turn it up in here? Yeah, look, look, yeah. I'm loving my life in the 
way that I'm coming up on here and living it now. Hey, they said I got it freestyle and plus the raw, no wit is allowed. We're never gonna disrespect, but yeah, it's about the test. That's why the I be showing up. Can I custom to get this off my I'm stressed? Fuck it, I'm the one that you gotta be with. I'm the one that is spitting and I gotta see this. I can see chips way out of regions. It doesn't even matter, I came out of regions from different places, different tastes. Smack your mouth, say different races. They try to hate this, but I take it. I'm the player, one leaving you naked without your clothing on. Who's the one that's gonna go off, be choking off? Yeah, I got that shit, I'm broken, dog. Yeah, I didn't say I'm choking, dog. I said I'm loking, dog. I said these, these things come out of my wrist, and I just start stroking, y'all. Start slashing, y'all. My freestyle is a raptor, dog. By the way, I do rap tours. That's a Universal Studios if you want to come through and watch me rap more. But if you want to see my ass on that tour, I could even show it to your back floor. Shit, I'm the guy that'll dunk and also slap the backboard at the same time, and you're like, yo, what's that score? That's a triple double, homie. I'm stealing, blocking, scoring. Everybody knows that I'm shocking. John Stockton with the stock tips. They got this. Carl Rule is watching. That's Malone, the Raps are dome. A freestyle off of the top, and that's my dome. Is any other cat at home? They want to freestyle with me? Dog, a rap a poem. For any other cat think they rap with me. You couldn't beat me with chat GPT. Anybody else want to rap with these? They can do that and rap for free. You pay your master fee to attack to me. But better watch out if you backing me. Cause I am a cat that brings attacking G. Yeah, this is level six. This is Tekken 3. Thinking that you're ready, but I hit you with some weaponry. Just like Eddie 3 g And I'm doing it with spin kicks. Better watch out cause I win this. No, it isn't written. But if I wanted to bring in the finest pin clip, I could tell you that I did it. And I could spit it so precise, you'd be like, is it something of an admission? Yeah, this is me and my competition, my conduition. Everybody else is open, thinking that they don't, but they help me poke in. This freestyle game can scan me, I'm looking at your cartoon stickers, and I'm thinking I'm Stanley, creating Spider-Man all over the net. I'm making you plan B, abort this, think they could have horses, four horsemen could have scorched this, every time I rap, pulling out your organs, fuck you and everybody that you came in, and especially uh, you and Billy Corgan, I'll start smashing pumpkins, I'll show up, uh, it's so unfortunate that I start uh, smashing, bumping, dumping something, this is freestyle, free thoughts that are often lost, but I talk a lot, doesn't matter cause I walk the block, I used to walk the block with a lot of chalk chalk MCs out, and now they don't talk a lot, they just talk to God, or maybe they're saying they prayers when they talk a lot, yeah, I knock them off the block, I rock a lot, I tell these MCs, I I am the master with the chakra spot. I got all six in line when I'm talking, dog. Come on. Anybody want to walk with me? You better watch out because I don't do it softly. I speak like this. Highly intelligent, but never forget to rest like an elephant. You better watch out because I'm never just spreading it. They give me the credit for doing this and peddling. And you can see they're better than this. They better watch out. I don't suffer the shit. I don't step up in it for the cheddar and shit. I step up because I'm going to discredit a bitch who want to try to use this as a vulture because it's my culture. This is over. All of these corporations raping us, trying to take from us. Us. This is something I grew up with, tune up in Pine Hills, this is why I rhyme still. I'm the guy that you see after five pills pop up out of the sky and say, guys, chill. I am the master dawn, I am the track that I'm rapping on. No other cat could rap with me, I keep on rapping to the past of dawn. I'll fucking rap to the next weekend's fucking crack of dawn. You could throw a pit, you could say, what track is he rapping on? You could throw a thousand on and I'm still rapping, dog. There ain't no cat that could rap me off. Yeah, the cat is soft, and now I could spit and leave you cats slashing off. Fuck it, I'm gonna rap again and say I'm a rapper. That with Hasselhoff, I walk up to your fucking funeral at graduation and knock your tassels off. It's not a hassle, dog. I'll jump into a pool of cannonballs and scream cannonball. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know. Wow. We got all that, sir, right? Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir. Hey, sir. Hey, yeah, he's switch, mean, switching yes. in thoughts and stuff, you know. Yes. It's the fact. Well. It's the fact that when even when you lost your train of thought, like we saw you like calculate it, and you yeah. like it's like you were playing like Zelda. You were just playing, playing yeah, yeah. slice, slice it in, and like oh <laughs> man. Then you just kept going, and then at one point in time, you just really kept going, and I was like, oh, there that flow go. Yeah, that's the one that's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so the you short on you YouTube, you know with right the freestyle, there. like it's about not being afraid to mess up, and okay. turn whatever you mess up into into something fun. So there's moments that you go through where like, hey, you can get you can get caught up, but then something else pops in your mind and you drop something else that just instantly pops in your head. So that's I find the fun in doing that. And when we do long form, when we workshop that with free daps, now you can see like, OK, picture nine other people doing that with each other. Just going off each other. Yeah. And just oh, learning. Yeah. How, so it's it's very dope, man. If I you haven't seen it. a free dap show. You where, absolutely need to. Where can they see a free dap show? 
in Orlando, you can see a free dap show probably at Sac Comedy Club once a month. We normally do a show at Sac Comedy Club downtown. Okay. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're in New York every month at the Caveat NYC, we're we're there. And if you're a college, okay. talk to your events coordinator, events activities coordinator, and request free dabs. Speaking of New York, yeah, you have an opportunity. Yes. For some. For some very lucky listeners out there. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you go ahead and tell? Because before we before we got to get out of here, yeah, Go man. ahead and tell these these lucky free worlders out here what you can present. Today. So, every month I have a venue in New York called Secret Poor. It's in Brooklyn. If any artists or painters, poets, comedians, this is going to be a variety show sponsored by a weed company. It's it's really dope. We did a 420 and chill party last month, but it is very much so an art party. I have people coming out painting. If you want to perform or do anything there, just hit me up. You can perform there. It's the first Tuesday of every single month, and I'm looking to book this out for the next six months. So if anybody is hearing this and they want to get on this and make their plans, do it now before it gets booked up because we just started doing that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that, was, that was me totally just saying I'm totally down. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah gonna... Hit me up ASAP at Matt Ills, M-A-D-D-I-L-L-Z, um, so we can make that happen. But We're yeah. going to make sure this is its own little segue yeah. on the video so we can post this part of it. But Mr. Matt Ills, as I go to the side over here, <laughs> thank you for yeah, coming man. to Free World Radio. It is a complete honor and a privilege to interview you. Is there anybody of somebody of your stature that you want to shout out and say hello man to. i want to shout out myself for yeah. enduring <laughs> all of this shit that i have to go through it's fucking crazy y'all it's a movie and i love everybody who's supporting and making it happen thank you and that will do it for free world radio before we go we got to do a couple of announcements that you get to stay tuned <laughs> so <clears throat> Wednesday the 26th, if you are just happen to be in the Winter Park area, please come by Deja Vu. Heard it's seafood and R&B vibes over there. Lovemore Studios, Kiara Lene, DMENT, Desi Dez. I don't know. It's an R&B fest. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what I heard. They're trying to be the next R&B fest over there at Deja nice. Vu. It's, it's on University, right across from Ross's. Check it out, Wednesday. Be there at like 7, 8 o'clock. Next thing on the agenda. Man, just like you came on radio today, you talked your shit. <laughs> you talked your shit. <laughs> well, we just happen to have a talk your shit Thursday on the 27th of April. Hey. So come through if you want to. Everybody gets one song on entry, $10 to entry, 21 and up. If you're under 21, I'm not going to tell you you can't come, but you know. <laughs> hey, you y'all know what it is. Um, Come through. Open mic, open vibes. Y'all know what it is on Thursdays. We also have Spotlight Reloaded on the 30th. Make sure you come out to that. That's the great Leo. The great Leo. Trust me. If you've never been to a Spotlight Reloaded party, you don't know what you're missing. Everybody's a great act. I heard through the grapevine we have Mr. T.H.E. Going to perform over there. Oh, man. Yes, I will be there. I shall be there. Ah. You know, we'll, we'll, we're looking forward to that. So, And then there's one more performance, too. I can't think of it. Oh, man, I can't believe I'm blanking out on the radio. Oh, well. <laughs> well, that's it for Free World <laughs> Radio right now. We'll catch y'all next episode. Until next time, stay free. Hey. Mm -hmm.